you don't really like or not? <laughs> That's okay. Are we? Yes, I guess we are. It's difficult to know in all this wind. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. This is Durva here. Uh, very, very happy Women's Day to all of you. Uh, today we are here with Dr. Shalini Lal, who I had to work really hard to persuade uh, to come and talk to us. Uh, Dr. Shalini Lal, uh, okay, don't get fooled by the doctor there. She's not going to save us from any coronavirus here. But yes, what she can help us with is uh, navigating the workplace. So that's what she's here for. Uh, let me just give you a brief rundown on uh, Shalini. Shalini is from batch of 1993 IMA. Nine years my senior, and uh, she's done her PhD from US, UCLA in Org Science. Uh, she's a writer. She writes. She's written a book, uh, Secret Life, Life of Organizations. Of organizations. Uh, she's a regular columnist with La uh, Mint, and she's uh, she speaks. She writes. She also consults uh, large companies and various CEOs and CXOs on, you know, how to. Uh, perform best when it comes to uh, leading companies etc and that's what we'll be talking about today which is uh, how do you reach and achieve peak performance so over to you uh, Shalini yeah thanks Durva so as you can see we are in the beautiful Rai Kila Pitora Park and Durva and I were just talking about what it takes to be in a peak performance state uh, so I'm going to share five things that I know for sure work and then I'm going to ask Durva to share a few more. <laughs> so let's get started. What is a peak performance state? Now we all know that there are times when we really feel our best. We know that whatever it is we're doing, we're performing at our peak capacity, peak capabilities. So that's really what a peak performance state is all about. And I'm going to share with you five easy or not so easy, depends on your point of view, ways to get there. Number one, sleep. Now, when you're young, sleep is absolutely underrated and all of us feel that maybe sometimes actually it's even getting in the way of the important work that we need to do. But do you know that it's when we sleep that our brain physically gets rid of metabolic toxins? So in a sense, when we haven't slept well, it's like, um, you know, almost driving a car with gunk in the fuel tank. So sleep, good sleep, deep sleep, seven, eight, whatever your body needs is fundamental to being able to perform at your best state. And there's an added bonus as well. So when you're working on something that is difficult or where the answer cannot come simply linearly, uh, bringing in sleep while you're working on a difficult problem sometimes has the magical effect of giving you an answer when you wake up and there is a science behind how this actually works it turns out that when you're asleep uh, the part of your brain that's engaged in active thinking you know quietens down and that allows your brain to make connections that it simply can't when you know the prefrontal cortex or our thinking brain is so active so sleep is number one Sleep allows you to be in a frame of mind where you can think your clearest. It also allows you to come up with solutions that you sometimes can't when you're simply awake. So that's number one. Number two, and this might be a little surprising. Um, one of the things that perhaps stops many of us, and I'm sure many of you are super talented, but you may have noticed that you know, you're having an off day sometimes or uh, you know, somebody is annoying you, or you're angry, or you're upset. So we all know that when we're feeling uh, any of this you know, whole slate of negative emotions, it's very hard to perform at our absolute best. So to help us get rid of negativity in our lives, to be in a peak performance state, one thing that really helps is forgiveness. And I know it's a little surprising, it's, it's an almost counter, you know, not something you would expect. But being able to enter a space of forgiveness at least once or maybe twice a day where, you know, you can take a deep breath and forgive all the people who may have caused you a little bit of annoyance. Sometimes forgive whatever's happening in the environment that might have, you know, created a little bit of discomfort or annoyance for you. And of course, sometimes it might mean just forgiving ourselves. 
Now, the interesting thing is that uh, when they've done studies around how forgiveness impacts the way our brain works, then it turns out that when we are experiencing a deep state of forgiveness, our mind works in what are called alpha waves. And alpha waves allow you to come up with creative solutions that you otherwise can't. So forgiveness is a great way to reach that state of calm, almost meditative, that allows your brain to work with alpha waves and you to be your most creative. So forgiveness is number two. A third, and you must have heard about the importance of gratitude over the last few years. You know, this has, this has really reached uh, the top of all discourse around peak performance, happiness and general well-being. And I, to be honest, for the longest time was quite skeptical because I used to keep a gratitude journal and it did nothing for me. So end of the day, I would write five things I was grateful for. And I felt I couldn't understand why people were you know, would speak so much about the importance of gratitude. Of course, then I realized I was doing it completely wrong. What you write is really not important. In fact, it's not even the point. The important point is feeling that gratitude. So it's, it's, the, it's the feeling, it's in that emotional state that the way our brain is working shifts. Um, you might be aware of the fact that all of us have set points which govern how happy or unhappy we are in our day-to-day -day experience. And it turns out that external events don't really influence that set point so much. So for instance, if you win a lottery, that makes you delighted for maybe a few days, maybe even a few months. But a year later, lottery winners return to whatever state of happiness they were you know, a year, a year ago before they won the lottery. And similarly, when people go through devastating experiences it turns out that as time goes by they go back to that set point so that set point is it's it's fairly um, uh, you know it's like an equilibrium holder it holds us in place and while some people are really lucky and they're just generally very happy but many of us would like to work on our uh, general experience of well-being and happiness and it turns out that gratitude is actually a way to hack that and the way to hack it is of course list down the things that you're grateful for and you know for all of us who've had this kind of wonderful education actually if we search for it there are so many things we can be grateful for but it's to experience and feel that sense of gratitude and hold it hold it for a few seconds maybe a few minutes and over time that shifts the set point of well-being that we all operate with so you know it's it's a it's a it's almost a life hack you bring in more gratitude you live a more happy life and it takes you to a state of mind where you're able to perform your best so you know we're all actually finally um, at the mercy of our neurochemicals and that's why this whole industry around uh, you know drugs uh, related to the mind so the neurotransmitters which the brain releases when we experience a sense of gratitude serotonin dopamine are all closely linked to our capacity to perform our best so you know surprisingly gratitude which seem gratitude and forgiveness both of which sound like you know they're out of uh, maybe a spiritual course and i'm sure they are part of many spiritual courses actually also works simply as performance hacks so if you aren't inclined you know that way you can just look at it as you know something you want to do to perform at your best the fourth is visualization and um sports psychology of course and I'm, I'm sure Durva knows a lot about this uh, makes a lot of use of visualization and uh, that's because when we visualize any outcome uh, many of the neurons in our brains are activated just the way they would be as if we were actually performing them so it's like a mental rehearsal and you don't actually have to be on the field it's not that different when it comes to your performance in anything else your ability to visualize it on the one hand gives you a map because you have an idea of what good is supposed to look like for you at least uh, but it also influences the way your brain is working around that activity you've given a dress rehearsal in your mind so visualization 
again very widely used in the area of sports psychology but it also works uh, in our you know day to day uh, experiences and very very helpful whenever we want to be our absolute absolute best now the reason for all of these is actually to get you to a place where whatever it is that you're doing is effortless the holy grail of all of this is this state of flow um many of you may have heard of it over the last decade or so there's been a lot of conversation around what is this state of flow how do we get there because we know that the most uh, amazing performances from people in the fields of sports uh, creative fields adventure sports uh, you know surfing snowboarding whatever uh, have all happened when people have been able to access this state of mind the state of flow uh and just as the name suggests it's a state where anything you're doing is almost effortless it's happening when you're in it it's described as a state of you know almost merger and i'm sure all of us have experienced it in bits and pieces but the idea is to develop a routine that allows us to get there when we really need it uh there aren't as many studies of what this means in the organizational world but there was one by mckinsey which suggested that executives report being five times as effective in a state of flow as compared to a regular state so there you have it five ways to be in your peak performance state the first is sleep second practice forgiveness that gets rid of the negativity third gratitude that allows our brain to perform uh, to be in a state of well-being and perform at our best uh, four ah visualization and all of this is intended to get to the wonderful state of flow now durva i'm going to ask you to share what you do on a regular basis to get there Okay, she forced me to do this. <laughs> yes, <I did. laughs> All right. So, um I I I don't have uh you know any insights into how to achieve peak performance. What I can definitely share is how I get into the state of flow. Yeah. Uh because one thing I do pride myself in is that ability to focus and deliver something probably much faster than a lot of people can. So, uh a mod, you know, modesty aside. So, on on how i do it i have a three step process so the first thing that i do is on a post it i write down what do i want to achieve with this session that i'm getting into i my work is mostly mind work right so it's just thinking in front of the computer so i write it down on a post it this is what i want to achieve this is the objective of the session and i stick it on my laptop and then i switch on my very loud alternative rock music and i i kid you not please invest in very very good quality noise cancelling headphones i wear my noise cancelling headphones but before i do that i also get ready so that's part of my process so that there is no distraction i put water on my side i put some nibbles on my side and i even make sure that the temperature of the ac is right so that nothing can distract me from the work that i'm getting into sometimes i also let my cat sit next to me because that helps uh so yeah that's that's uh, uh, the the first one is you know have a goal in place the second one is prepare and be ready for the flow that you're about to get into find your own process something that helps you shut out the world for me it's music like i said alternative rock gets me there the third one very counterintuitive is uh, people say that you when you get into a state of flow you should remain there and finish it but what i'm going to say is very counterintuitive which is take breaks take breaks for about 5 minutes after every hour not only is it good for your body it relaxes you because you've been tense you've been thinking relax a bit go around you know what i do is actually i go into the wimby group and i read your posts so that's my break every uh, every hour so now i now you know why i am there so often because i'm taking break from my work so three steps basically uh have a goal in place visualize it like you said second thing is have a process to shut things out and third is to take a break so now i have a question for you <laughs> sure. okay uh it's a little different from peak performance but somewhere related 
and it's 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 something that I've been thinking about. Um, we've all read about you know the 10,000 hours of work that is required to achieve any high level of expertise in uh, mostly muscle memory related. Uh, uh, activities, whether it's music, whether it's sports, whether it is any new skill that you're trying to acquire. Now, it made me think that is that something, are those 10,000 hours a requirement when it comes to leadership as well? Back of the envelope calculation, it seems like about four and a half, five years. So what do you have to say for that? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so um, to be honest, I think it helps a great deal. I think leadership is one of those really uh, little understood areas where uh, many of us, uh, definitely me, just assumed that well, because we are supposedly smart, we're going to enter an organization and leadership will just flow from us. <laughs> That's simply not the case. Leadership itself has, you know, is comprised of so many skills within it. And while any of us might be a natural at maybe one or two, there are at least a couple more that we need to work with. And uh, just to share, uh, I do work as a leadership coach with uh, very senior leaders who are you know, there because they're really good at some elements of leadership. But it takes time when you're working on, say, uh, how do I build a vision that's inspiring? How do I develop a sense of trust within my team? Uh, how do I make sure uh, that my team knows that I care about their well-being. Uh, you know, there are just so many elements of it which do take practice and take work, particularly the ones that don't necessarily come naturally to us. So I do think that uh, leadership does take practice. You know, the whole thing about the 10,000 hours though is, it's not the number of hours, it's how conscious you are about what you're doing, what's working, what's not working, and the growth that you can you know, do in, in the same hours. Otherwise, you can do the same thing forever, and instead of getting better, you can actually get worse. Right. And one way to think about it is, you know, just, just think of driving. So, like I've been driving for many years, and I'm pretty sure I haven't gotten any better, because I don't put any thought into it, you know, it's just something to do. But if one were conscious while driving and say, okay, how can I be better? Let me try something else next time I take out the car, then you're going to get better. So it's exactly the same, I think, for leadership. Uh, we all need to work on becoming better leaders. It doesn't just happen, although it might happen naturally in a few ways, but there are many others that we need to develop. And experience, but experience in a very conscious way, where you are thinking of how to get better and uh, consciously trying to maybe push yourself that extra 5% each day, try something new, develop a new skill. That's what really makes great leaders. Uh, and and uh, sorry, if I may ask another yeah. question sure. on the same topic. How do you suggest we become conscious of this? I mean, let's say, you know, you have a team of 15, 30, or maybe even two or three people. So how do you become conscious about it and, you know, uh, improve upon your leadership skills. These are soft skills and all of us have been guilty of this at B school where we thought, okay, OB is something, hai karna hai. let's focus on form and, you know, SAS and all the other things. So we, yes, miss the cause. But tell me, how do you become conscious about it? Oh, good question. And I can tell you for sure that <laughs> we haven't rehearsed this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I think... Um, First is you have to care about it because I think a lot of leaders don't necessarily care as much about being a good leader. But if you do care about it, then it means reflection, uh, asking others perhaps uh, what is it that, how are you doing, what are things you're doing well, what are things you could do better at. Uh, it also means looking at others in your organization who you have respect for Absolutely. and see you know, what is it that they're yeah, doing yeah. that's maybe a little bit different from you. and trying to very consciously work on that bit by bit uh, maybe a little bit every week or at least every couple of weeks uh, nothing you can't be really good at frankly anything just you know or maybe someone can and I just haven't met them <laughs> but for most of us we have to firstly care about being good at something then we have to ask ourselves what is it that we are doing how is that doing and pretty much in across any field what's working well what's not working well 
what do we want to do differently? And of course, uh, then continuously working on that entire cycle. So yeah, <laughs> that's what we need to do. Thank you. Sorry, I hope I didn't stump you with too many questions. Uh, so yeah, I think our 20 minutes are up. I wish this could go on. But Shalini, that means we'll have to do another session with you on leadership <laughs> and how we can become better leaders. So sure. you're not going to shy away from that. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. So uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and others also who will watch a regarded version of this. Uh, a very, very happy Women's Day, Day to all of you. <laughs> and this is not the first of our series. There'll be many more. So keep tuning in and keep giving us suggestions on who you would want to hear as well and what topics. Thank you so much, Dr. Shalini Lal. Thank you. Uh, have a nice Thank day. You. Bye -bye. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Bye.